engaging the community since 1970. This is WIS Awareness. Good morning and thank you for joining us for Awareness. I'm your host, Megan Norman. Mitchell has it and he's at the buzzer. It's over. Well, the hardest part is just swallowing the fact that you know, my career is over. I really just want to go to everybody and just say I'm sorry. I wanted to win a national championship. I did. A disappointing end to her USC basketball career. Elisa Welch and the USC women's basketball team came just points away from sealing the deal for a chance to compete for a national championship for the first time in program history. What she's left with our, to our program um, is quite incredible. We need to apologize to her for not, you know, you know getting the, the national championship that she deserved. But her story is not over. Chicago Sky Select, Elisa Welch. Elisa was drafted by the Chicago Sky in the WNBA. An exciting moment for Welch and her fans. I'm beyond excited. I couldn't, I honestly, I couldn't be more happy right now. A thrill that did not last long. In May, Welch was released by the Chicago Sky. Learned how to be an adult. You know, I learned that, you know, now it's kind of time to just kind of spring out and be on my own. Elisa's journey with basketball does not end there. Joining me now is Elisa Welch, a former USC women's basketball player and now a professional player. <laughs> Elisa, thank you for being with us. Of course, thank you for having me. Now, on your Facebook page on July 13th, mm -hmm. you made the announcement mm -hmm. you were going to... I'm going to Portugal. I will be heading over to Portugal to play professional basketball overseas. You leave in September. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Um, it was a process. You know, it, it really was a process going through the whole WNBA process. And then my agent, you know, my agent called me a couple of days, you know, before then. And he said, you know, we, we got something kind of brewing for you. And I said, okay, what's going on? And, you know, they told me that the team in Portugal really wanted me. Um, you know, it was something that they had their, their sights set on. And mm -hmm. we got down to the contract negotiations and we finalized it. And it was, it was like a big weight off my shoulders to yes. finally know, okay. Now I know where I'm going. Now I know what's going to happen for me. Right. A very exciting time. Mm -hmm. And with that post on your Facebook page, you said, work in silence and mm -hmm. let your success do the talking. Mm -hmm. From USC to Portugal, and then you quoted Proverbs 3, 5 mm -hmm. through 6. Mm -hmm. Hashtag Lisa takes on Portugal. <laughs> yes, Lisa takes on Portugal. You know, it's just a matter of not worrying about, you know, everything else that's going on. You know, taking care of my end of our mind of the bargain and knowing that the rest is going to fall through and that's that's just trusting the process right. you know trusting the process and you know like Proverbs says leaning not on my own understanding right. you know knowing that God is always going to get me through it and right. he did and so you know I couldn't be more grateful for that right because we don't know why some things happen mm -hmm. so what did happen with Chicago Sky were you given a reason yeah um you know I, I I got cut obviously and one of the biggest reasons was my size you know and and coach Chapman didn't really want to throw me into being a a small four because it wasn't something I was used to yet. So mm -hmm. she kept me in my comfort zone, you know, playing at the power forward position. But, you know, it's different. You know, I, I could get away with it on the college level. Um, but, you know, when you're undersized, you got to bring a lot more, you know, to the table than I think I was prepared to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll always be thankful, you know, for even giving me a chance. You know, I, I got to go to the draft. I got to, you know, hear my name called. Right. You know, I got to stand up there and take my picture. That's something nobody will ever be able to take away from me. And, you know, I, I gained friends from that organization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't all bad. Not at all. You mm -hmm. certainly made relationships mm -hmm. there. And are you hoping Portugal will be a stepping stone mm -hmm. to the WNBA? Most definitely. You know, my goal has always to been has always been to play in the WNBA. You know, that's been a lifelong dream of mine since mm -hmm. I've been a little kid. Um, and I've gotten a taste of it. Um, but now, you know, you got to trust the process. And this is just a building block. You know, when I talked to Coach Daly, she said this is a part of your journey. Right. So, you know, you take it as it comes. And I'm excited. You know, I am excited. So now for the next seven and a half months, I have something to set my sights on. And hopefully it'll get me to where I need to go as far as playing in the league next summer. And in terms of preparation, mm -hmm. how are you preparing? How is the game and style of play different? It's a lot more physical. Um, so uh, my biggest thing is getting myself mentally prepared for it. I've always prided myself on being somebody who's able to adjust um, to any situation, but mm -hmm. you know, making it as lifelike as possible. So when I'm going through my workouts, making sure it's physical workouts, making sure it's a, a toll on me both physically and mentally um, right. because it's different. And, you know, but there's some things that factor into it that you, you really can't do while you're here, which is the time difference. Um, I think Portugal is a, a five hour time difference, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, in the style of play, you know, it's a little bit more um tempo, like I said, the physicality of it, but try to right. make it as game like as possible for right. me. 
so that when I go, it's not that big of a transition. But you've always risen to the occasion, mm -hmm. so I'm sure Portugal will be no different. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know Portuguese? Are you learning Portuguese? I don't. <laughs> I do not know Portuguese. I actually told Coach Daly we had a conversation, you know, about possibly getting me some Rosetta Stone uh -huh. <laughs> for yes. Portuguese because I don't know any. I barely know Spanish, so... You know, I need to, I need to, I need to get a head start on that. Well, we know your mom spent some time over in that part of the world. So maybe she can help you a little bit <laughs> maybe, with that. Maybe, I'm hoping because I need, I need, I need a little something. All I got is English right now. <laughs> well, let's go back to those moments after that heartbreaking mm -hmm. game. We saw that video. Yeah. We know how devastating yeah. it was for you, for the whole team, for mm -hmm. all the fans who mm -hmm. have been rallying behind the team. Why were you apologizing? Um, you know, I just... I felt like a lot of it was me not living up to, you know, what I said I wanted to do when I came in, which was win a national championship. You know, I, I naturally, truthfully felt bad, you know, that, that I couldn't make it happen, you know, because when I came in, there were goals that I set off for myself, um, and, and, I, and I accomplished a lot of them. We won an SEC tournament championship. We won an SEC championship. We were the number one ranked team in the country, but the main goal, I would have given up all of that, you know, to be a national champion. And, I definitely felt bad because, you know, it was something that I, I put on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, but my teammates, they, they did a really great job of just letting me know you did all you could. And, right. you know, they apologized to me as well, and I apologized to them. And, yeah. you know, a lot we, of hugs, a lot of yeah, tears. Yeah, a lot of hugs, a lot of tears. And I always remember Asia Wilson coming to me in the locker room, and she just hugged me, and she started crying. She said, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I am too. Mm -hmm. But I, I enjoyed the process. So. You know, once I was finally able to swallow the pillow, I, yeah. I looked back and I was able to realize it was a great career. It was a great run. And how did you use that experience or how are you using that experience? Because it's a true test mm -hmm. of faith. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it, it showed in every obstacle that I've faced since then. You know, it was it was hard being cut. It mm -hmm. was. But, you know, I, I feel like it wasn't a disappointment that I haven't felt before because right. I felt that disappointment, you know, when we lost in the final four. So being there and having to deal with that and kind of just roadblocks. You know, every every obstacle in your life is a roadblock. How are you going to get mm -hmm. through that roadblock is a question. Are you going to stop, you know, right. and allow that to stop your path? Or are you going to find a way around it, you know, right. over it or through it? So, you know, I was able to to use that as kind of fuel and, and it's just little motivation. Mm -hmm. You know, my goal is, is to be a champion, whether it's overseas, whether it's in the WNBA, I want to be a champion because I got a little taste of that with the SEC championship and yeah. I want more. I'm always the type right. of person who wants more. So yeah, it fuels me and it, it, and it gives me something to definitely look forward right. to when it comes to playing up, up, ne up next. And you talked about Coach Daly and mm -hmm. I know she's been a, a huge role model for you mm -hmm. and giving you a lot of advice. Yeah. Um, has that relationship continued and what has she said about the Final Four mm -hmm. and now moving to Portugal? Coach Daly, is, Coach Daly is like another mom to me, honestly. You know, that's somebody who I can look down the road 30 years from now and I know I'll still have a great relationship with her. You know, I'm, I'm grateful to, to have been able to be coached by, you know, a great, but also somebody who is an incredible person outside of basketball. You know, and I think with what she does with Twitter and social media mm -hmm. and allowing people to be inside of her life, you see, Interact. you know, she's, she's a great, she's a fun, easy going, you know, one of the nicest people you ever meet. You don't necessarily see it on the court all the time, but you know, you see it right. outside of that. And, you know, she just told me life goes on you know, things happen. You know, she was disappointed when she was a player, mm -hmm. but look at where she is now. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the most successful basketball players, one of the most Absolutely. successful coaches. You know, she has a whole community in USC right. behind her. So, you know, it was it was a part of her process. And she told me to always just trust the process. Right, and she's instilling some of that drive mm -hmm. and her character into her players. Oh, of course, of see. course. Elisa, still more to come with you. Thanks for being here. And raising Elisa, her mother weighs in on how her daughter has grown and the role model she's become. Stay with us. Welcome back to Awareness. Fans can be a driving force for any sport. The energy and motivation they provide can be infectious, and we've certainly seen that firsthand with Gamecock fans. I'm joined now by Elisa's number one fan, her mom, Sherelle. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you for having us. Now I have to ask, how many games did you go to? Or maybe I should say, how many <laughs> did you miss? Because I know it wasn't many. In the course of four years, I missed three home games. Um, so, you know, they had a, a very lengthy home game schedule. Yes. So I'm not sure exactly how many total, but I missed three and, and uh, 
caught some of the, you know, away games, but the majority of the home games, I was there, there for four years. Yeah. You've always been so active. Talk about how important it is to be that support system for Elisa. Well, you have to, you know, um, because uh, a lot of times, you know, kids use the energy, you know, from their family and their fan base to kind of fuel them. Um, especially if they're getting frustrated in the mm -hmm. game, because I know how she is if she gets frustrated, you know, just to kind of, you know, be that voice, you know, voice of reasoning. So, you know, it was important to just, you know, let her know that, you know, the sacrifice is there, I'm, you know, I'm going to be there. Right. Well, and talk a little bit about the woman you've seen her mm -hmm. become. Yeah. Obviously, she's changed from freshman year yeah. to now, obviously yeah. earlier than that as yes. well. But she's really become a role model. We've yeah. seen her, her team building skills with the younger sure. players. Mm -hmm. So how has that made you feel as a mom to watch that growth and that development? Well, you know, as a parent, it, it makes you feel good to know that, you know, you're responsible for some of the foundation and that, you know, everything that you try to tell them and, you know, you try to instill in them that you finally see the fruits of your labor. You know, so to kind of see her, as she said, you know, she went from a caterpillar to a butterfly, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome because I always saw the leadership in her, you know, even when she started playing soccer as a, as a three year old, you know, I just, I just saw something in there, you know, because she wanted to be the one to kind of give the direction, you know, and, and, and have right. that drive. So just to see it come, you know, full blown, you know, it's like you know, okay, you know, she got it, right. you know, natural born leader, I guess, right. you know, I think some, some, some children are like that. And she just sure, had just that within it. her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, within her. Yeah. Well, so soccer initially, how yes. old was she when she was playing soccer? She was three and a half. We were in Spain and, and she was three and a half. We had just gotten there and, and, and they allowed me to put her in the, in, in the three year old soccer. Yeah. And, and that's where the athleticism started to surface with her playing soccer. Mm -hmm. And she did great. Now, how have you and her father really helped to mold her and help her through this caterpillar to butterfly transformation? Well, you know, we just tried to keep her kind of grounded, you know, um, because he lives, you know, out of state, but he was always a phone call away, you know, mm -hmm. and her being like daddy's girl, if you will. You know, him also being that voice of reason for her, but just giving her the reassurance, you know, especially if she felt that she didn't play well. Right. Um, or, you know, if she, you know, just kind of started doubting herself, you know, him mm -hmm. kind of being the balance on one side of it and me being the balance on the other side of it. Right. But just, right. you know, helping her to approach womanhood mm -hmm. and basketball, you know, um, with grace, right. you know, and not being afraid um, at the challenges that, you know, kind of come along with that. So mm -hmm. just kind of being the balance that she needed. Yeah, in well, life. certainly yeah. needed that because she yeah. was also a student, if we forget. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah, it, and it's a lot. You know, a lot of times, you know, kids don't understand that the academics, you know, part of it is a big, right. you know, it's, it's a big thing, right. you know. You and that. You have to have that. That's yeah. the foundation, but you have to have time mm -hmm. management. Right. You know, and if you right. don't have time management with being an athlete, then, you, you know, you won't succeed. And so, you know, that was kind of the voice of reason that we provided for her, especially in her freshman year, because right. time management is right. so, so difficult because it's all new mm -hmm. for you, all mm -hmm. new for you. So um, that was a big, you know, that was a big, um, a big thing for us. You know, was, that was kind of the most important thing for us to make sure that she had the time management and understood, you know, you got to make, you know, have to have the balance. This right. is what you wanted. Right. You well, and, and how do you balance your emotions? Because uh, I know you were very involved in the games yeah. and she would be too, both very emotional. So yeah. how did you strike that balance? You know, it, it's hard because as a parent, when your child hurts, you hurt, you know, when your child is, you know, happy, you know, you're happy, but you know, um, they kind of gravitate to what they see from you, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of times, um, you know, with some emotions that I wanted to express, you know, a little bit more, but I had to kind of keep it together it for her. I had to hold back, yeah. especially with the final four. I had to hold back, you know, um, for her because I had to be that pillar of support for her behind the scene when there were no teammates around, no there cameras. were no coaches, no cameras. I was that pillar of support. I was at ear for her to just kind of listen to and for her to vent. What did you say to her? What was your advice? You know, I would always tell her, Megan, you know what? You will always be my superstar, my MVP, my player of the year, my player of the nation. You know, what you did or did not do does not define who you are. You right. know, you have a love for the game. You have a heart for the game. You know, um, you just never give up. You know, just, just trying to encourage her because when I thought she did well, she thought she did horrible. Of course. You know. Yeah, she's her toughest critic. She, is her toughest critic but you know at the same time you know you have to keep it real and I kept it right. real with her you know when needed you know to be you know kept real so right 
Well, we're looking forward to having the two of you <laughs> reunited right here coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Awareness. I'm here now with Mom and Muffin. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how that nickname came about, because I know you yell it from the stands. Uh, <laughs> I do, but you, you know, she was an eight pound, four ounce, 22 and a half inch long baby. And I tell you what, this was just, I looked at her when she was born and I'm like, oh, look at that little chocolate chip muffin. And I'm telling you, since 1993, that's it's all stuck. I ever, it's stuck with. Oh, yes. And I so you showed up to a game with a, a muffin on your shirt? I did, because mm -hmm. I had some shirts made for our family, because we had a group of family members that came in and had the muffin on it with the, with the queen's crown on it. Muffin, of course. the queen of, of the course. course. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Well, let's talk a little bit about the decision to go to USC, mm -hmm. because you started at a time mm -hmm. when women's basketball was not <clears throat> popular there. Mm -hmm. The fan base was not like it is now. Mm -hmm. So. Mom, starting with you, what promises did Coach Staley make to you as a parent? Well, you know, Coach Staley, when she came for the home visit, you know, she told me um, she was going to get a good education. That was the most important thing, you know, she's going to get a good education, um, that they would make lifelong relationships. You know, it was just mm -hmm. not about basketball, it was about the relationships after basketball, you know, it's over, and that, you know, to trust that, you know, they were going to take care of our daughter, you know, um, that, you know, they were going to um, win an SEC championship, you know, um, just be a better basketball player, but just be a better individual, mm -hmm. you know. That's and that's come true. Mm -hmm. It's come true. Did she tell you it may take some time? She said it's mm -hmm. going to take time. It's not, a, you know, a process that happens overnight, mm -hmm. but trust the process. Mm -hmm. Right. Trust and process. you did trust the process. I did. Yeah, I did. So, I know it's hard, but sum up your four years, your experience at USC. Um, I would say, if I could describe it in one word, it would be unforgettable. Um, just, you know, like my mom said, the relationships I built, you know, becoming a better person. Um, you know, Coach Daly, one saying I think that'll stay in my mind for the rest of my life is mm -hmm. her favorite saying, and that's a disciplined person can do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and she sat and she talked to me and my mom, and she said that at our home visit. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, when she was sold, <laughs> You know, it's like the whole family was so yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, she, I think the biggest thing I'll take from my, my career is not just the basketball part, but, you know, I graduated from college. You know, I'm somebody who, even when I stop playing, I'll have a degree, you know, from a great right. university. Right. And she made sure that at the end of the day, you know, you may not come out the best basketball player you want to be, but you will come out with a college degree mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll take you further than basketball, you know, could ever do. Right. So. You know, I definitely think that goes to a credit to why I went to USC. Mm -hmm. And talk about this new season coming mm -hmm. up for the current roster. Yeah. Talk about your hopes, ambitions, yeah. your dreams for them and some of your advice. Um, I'm excited for them. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for them because, you know, this, this community, I think, has rallied behind, you know, USC. And, and I still see it every day, you know, when I'm in Columbia. You know, people will come up to me and say, oh, you know, you've got a great run. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a fan of you guys. And, you know, I just look at... I look at just the support, you know, I look at not even just the team, the support, and I think people underestimate what your support system can do for your team. There were games where we were probably not playing our best, but our fans were behind us and it made us play even, even better. So I'm excited for the season. You know, I think it's a great team. Um, you know, I think the team chemistry is still there and I still have a relationship with everybody on the team. Um, you know, I talk to them you know, most of them um, on, a, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm... You're not going to lose those Yeah, of course not. You know, if you need to call me, yeah. you know, I'm here. You know, I, I worked out with them, you know, when I was up here helping out with camp over the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, these are my friends. Right. You know, these are people who I truly love and I care about. So, right. you know, I told them, I said, don't be surprised if you look up one game. And you see me yeah. you, yeah. you might see me behind the bench. You know, <laughs> you, you never know. So... <laughs> I'm excited. Maybe I come think back it's as a coach. Yeah, you know, be... I told you know I'm gonna let Coach Daly know. You know, she's still a relatively young coach, so you know, <laughs> give it about 20 years. You know, I might try to come back and take her job. You know, you never <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? You I'm never ready. know. So, yeah, I, I love this. I love the program, though. Absolutely love them. Well, mm -hmm. two quick questions for you mm -hmm. before we end our show. You've been busy this summer. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be going around the state over mm -hmm. the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you know, this summer has been eventful for me. Um, it's given me an opportunity to kind of branch out and do some other things. Um, one big thing I'm, I'm working with is Coach Davies Inner Soul Foundation. Um, and, and what I'm going to be doing within the next couple of weeks is going to, to DMVs all around the state. You know, whether it's Greenville, the lower state will be in Charleston mm -hmm. and Columbia. You know, they're doing the they're doing the uh, collaboration with Nikki Haley's foundation as far as trying to provide school supplies, but also shoes 
um, you know, to kids who need right. them. So, you know, I'll be going, signing Sign autographs, autographs, yeah, yeah you pictures. know, taking pictures, mm -hmm. you know, just, just showing my face, you mm -hmm. know, because a lot of these people are fans. Right. Um, also, you know, coming up, I'm, I'm going to be doing some camps of my own, you know, just to kind of try to give back. But, you know, the biggest thing I'll be doing is spending my time with my family um, that I can sure. because, you know, I'm, I'm down to about six weeks, right. you know, before I get ready to leave. So right. before my mom has a nervous breakdown, I, know. I gotta well, spend and, some and time mom, with so her. I know you were stationed in Spain for yes. a period of time. Do you yes. plan to go back and how do you plan on keeping in touch I, and going to those games? I know, <laughs> you know, live stream on Wi-Fi and, mm -hmm. and texting, but definitely vacation is gonna be in Portugal next year. My son and I have already talked about it. She's so. gonna come eat up all my food. Yeah, not a bad place to be. <laughs> Don't support her. You know, you as have long to. as God gives me strength, I'm gonna be there to support her. I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Elisa, finally, a big question. What do you think your legacy is at USC? <sighs> um, I, I've, I've, I've hoped and I've always hoped that I would leave a legacy of, of leadership and mm -hmm. honestly of character. Um, you know, I look at a lot of people idolize me and look up to me, not because of what I did on the court, um, but because of how I carried myself. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, because of the energy I brought and, you know, the leadership I brought. And, you know, I always will look back and, and, and look at two people, Morris, Morris and, and Sheila Crager, who endowed my name, you know, uh, with a scholarship at the university. And I'll say, you know, those are people who saw the character in me mm -hmm. um, that, you know, sometimes I didn't even see in myself. And mm -hmm. so I look back at that and I'll say, if nobody else, you know, I know there were at least two people, mom and of course my mom, right. you know, who, who saw the qualities that I wanted to bring because I wanted to be known as more than just a basketball player. Mm -hmm. And I think now when I come back 10 years from now, you know, people will remember more about me than just basketball. Um, and, and that's the legacy I wanted to leave because it's been fun. And it's been fun being Coach Daddy's first in-state recruit. You know, it's been fun winning our first, you know, SEC championship. It's been fun going to our first Final Four. but. You know, it goes deeper than that. You know, teams teams change every single year, right. but I wanted my legacy to remain constant. You know, 10, 15 years from now, and I think I've, I think I'm in a good position for that, and you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Elisa, we are very proud of you. We Thank wish you, you all the best moving Thank you. forward. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and an honor to have both Thank of you, you here with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank Appreciate you. it. Stay with us. We'll be right back with a final thought. Life is full of deserving moments and disappointments. Life can be a cruel teacher, but its tough love at times can push us toward our potential if we let it. We cannot be bound by our faults or our failures because those are just part of the process. But having courageous inner strength through all obstacles with patience, discipline, faith, and an optimistic attitude, I believe that can propel us into our dreams. Until next time, I'm Megan Norman. This is Awareness.